Hello, I'm Howard, pastor of the Roseville New Church, and welcome to Spiritual Shorts. This week's episode is on the subject of Cain and Abel. It's a classic story from the Bible, but it's also one of those stories that's worked its way into modern culture. So no, most people know the idea of Cain and Abel. They probably know it's from the Bible and they definitely know it's an old story. And it's an old story of one person killing another person. If they know a little bit more about it, they know that God then placed a curse on Cain. It's also an excellent story to highlight the unique teachings of the new church. And over these next several weeks, between now and the Christmas season, I've decided to take a look at several classic stories from the Bible that we can use to highlight the unique teachings of the new church. If you're new to the new church, if you're new to this channel, I hope that you find the next two months of stories to give you a fresh look at the Bible and a fresh look at the stories within the Bible. So let's begin. Above me here in the video, you'll see a link to an opening hymn. Now we'll go ahead and open the word and then I'll invite you to join me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Let your good deeds shine out for all to see, that all may praise your Father in heaven. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in the heavens, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as in heaven so upon the earth. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So Cain and Abel. Very early in the Bible, the book of Genesis chapter 4. And Adam had relations with his wife, Eve, and she became pregnant. When she gave birth to Cain, she said, with the Lord's help, I have produced a man. Later, she gave birth to his brother and named him Abel. When they grew up, Abel became a shepherd, while Cain cultivated the ground. When it was time for the harvest, Cain presented some of his crops as a gift to the Lord. Abel also brought a gift, the best portions of the firstborn lambs from his flock. The Lord accepted Abel and his gift, but he did not accept Cain and his gift. This made Cain very angry, and he looked dejected. Why are you so angry? The Lord asked Cain. Why do you look so dejected? You will be accepted if you do what is right. But if you refuse to do what is right, then watch out. Sin is crouching at the door, eager to control you. But you must subdue it and be its master. One day, Cain suggested to his brother, let's go out to the fields. And while they were in the field, Cain attacked his brother Abel and killed him. Afterward, the Lord asked Cain, where is your brother? Where is Abel? I don't know, Cain responded. Am I my brother's guardian? But the Lord said, what have you done? Listen, your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. Now you are cursed and banished from the ground which has swallowed your brother's blood. No longer will the ground yield crops for you, no, no matter how hard you work. From now on, you will be a homeless wanderer on the earth. 
Cain replied to the Lord, My punishment is too great for me to bear. You have banished me from the land and from, the pres from your presence. You have made me a homeless wanderer. Anyone who finds me will kill me. The Lord replied, No, for I will give a sevenfold punishment to anyone who kills you. Then the Lord put a mark on Cain to warn anyone who might try to kill him. So Cain left the Lord's presence and settled in the land of Nod, east of Eden. Amen. Here ends the lesson. And blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. So the new church teaches that the word, the Bible, is, is a bit, is a bit like, like an onion. onion. You know, there's some meaning on the outside of that onion, but when you, when you peel off the outer layer and you find that it has multiple layers, in fact, if you take a cross section of it, you see layer and layer and layer. When you peel off that outer layer, you realize that there are many layers beneath that. And from a meaning perspective, the Bible is just like that. Cain and Abel is an excellent example of these many layers. The simple message on top is, am I my brother's guardian? Well, if the least that you can do is not kill your brother, well, yes, <laughs> yes, you are your brother's guardian. But, but there's a deeper message, and, and this is where we get into those layers. You know, it's important to note just from a, a rational perspective when we look at this story, that we are not talking about two individuals, one named Cain and one named Abel, who lived tens of thousands of years ago. I don't know what the number is. The Bible certainly isn't clear. But even if the Bible was clear, are, are we to, to know that however many of those tens of thousands of years ago that, that, that scribes had writing and wrote this down. Now, in the new church, we in the new church we understand that the earliest parts of the Bible are are a made-up history. They're not actual history about individuals. What they're doing is they're telling the story of the earliest people who had a consciousness and an awareness of God. These earliest people spoken of in the Bible, Cain and Abel and, and their, you know, their parents, um, uh, Adam and Eve, they are representative of those first people. And that's a whole layer within itself, in fact, multiples of layer. I'm not going to go into that because in the context of a spiritual short, that wouldn't be very short. But one layer that I am going to go into is is that idea that not only do Cain and Abel represent those, the, the, that oldest generation of people or that first generation of people who knew the Lord, but uh, that they each represent an aspect of us. Again, that's a unique teaching of the, the new church that every character in the Bible represents a different aspect of, of who we are. As, as individuals and, and, and gives us insight into how our minds and our spirits work. Cain, for example, uh, represents our faith, our knowledge about God and the Lord and, and living our knowledge about how that faith is to be lived. Abel represents our love, and, and that's the manifestation of that knowledge. That's the bringing into existence and action our faith. In other words, Cain is what we know, and Abel is what we do from what we know. And in a certain respect, it's clear, obvious now, in this story, Cain was born first, so we have to know things before we can do things. 
if Cain and Abel are different aspects of me, how, how is it that my Cain can kill my Abel? Well, Emanuel Swedenborg writes extensively on this subject. Simply put, he says that any time that a person adopts a belief that their actions have no consequences, as long as they believe the right thing, when we do that, we kill Abel. Swedenborg notes that this actually resulted in the destruction, spiritually, the destruction of those first people who knew the Lord. I'll read to you uh, from his work. This is his work, Secrets of Heaven. It touches a little bit on how the, the faith has to come first, but then the action has to come second. And, and ultimately in our lives, the action needs to come first. The love, we need to express the love first. But by means of faith, the Lord imparts charity, at which point charity becomes the chief thing. Consequently, teaching in most ancient times was falsified when people made profession of faith and in so doing separated faith from love. In other words, he's saying that that the idea of, of just speaking their faith was abhorrent to them because they were afraid that if they did, they would separate it from love. Swedenborg goes on. People who falsified doctrine in this way or who separated faith from love, that is, made profession of faith alone, were at that time called Cain, and such a thing with them was a gross error. We commit the sin of Cain every time that we think about doing something, we're pretty sure it's wrong, but we justify it because, well, I'll be, uh, I'll be forgiven. And so there you have it. Cain and Abel, faith, charity, the two need to be together. That's why they're expressed as brothers. Cain kills Abel. It's simply you and me within ourselves thinking about or believing one thing but acting on another. Amen. I'll have another link to a closing hymn. Be right above me here. And thank you for joining me for Spiritual Shorts. I'm going to close the word now. May the Lord give his angels charge over you and keep you in all your ways. Amen.